Okay, so if you've played Resident Evil Zero HD Remaster, you've probably noticed that Capcom screwed the pooch pretty hard with the controls. Or at least it did, in my opinion. Uh, for instance, why is left trigger on the Xbox controller map? I, I just don't understand that. And, and some other, why is right bumper aim as opposed to right trigger? And then right left bumper is change target? I don't, I don't get it. So, as you may have guessed with the title, uh, I spent a couple days and I figured out a way to change them. Now this is specifically if you use an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller. If you're using a PS3 or PS4 controller using uh, that DS3 tool or SCP server, this should work because what that does is it basically emulates an Xbox 360 slash Xbox One controller. But if you're using an old controller that uses the direct input API, um, because Xbox One and Xbox 360 controllers use what's called X input and most of the new controllers do. Anyway, if you're using an old controller, to change those controls it should be pretty simple. Because if you go over to your username, app data, local, Capcom, Resident Evil Zero HD Remaster, open that up. And you can see here there's a joypad section and I'm pretty sure this is just for direct input controllers. So this basically uh, does not help anybody who uses a 360 controller or an Xbox One controller. Um, what this basically does is it assigns a button on the direct input joypad to what it would be on the Xbox 360 controller, if that makes any sense. So bottom line, if you're using an old joystick, you should be able to tweak this stuff in order to get a proper control scheme. Now, if you're using an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One controller or an X input controller, it's not so easy because the game automatically recognizes that controller and the controls are hard-coded. And you have one of four control layouts, all of which, in my opinion, are pretty crap. So we're going to be using a tool called X360CE to remap the controls the way we want them. And the way I'm going to be doing it in this video, you could really adjust it to your own liking, but the way I'm going to be doing it in this video is to use the Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller and mimic the GameCube control layout. Because I felt that control layout worked perfectly as opposed to the new way, which I just really don't like. So you're going to want to go into the game and then go to options and then go to controls and make sure the control type is A. Um, original doesn't actually matter. Vibration obviously doesn't matter either. But make sure the control type or the layout is A. What you're going to want to do next is download the 32-bit version of X360CE because Resident Evil Zero HD is a 32-bit game. So just download that, save it wherever you like. And once it's download, just extract it. And take the x360ce.exe and copy that to your Resident Evil's game folder where the executable is. So mine is in game, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Resident Evil Zero. Yours may be in a different location, probably Program Files x86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Resident Evil Zero. I've changed mine slightly. So you're just going to want to paste it in there. And if you don't see the .exe on yours, that's fine. I just have a setting in Windows so that I can see known file extensions. And right now you want to make sure your controller is plugged in. And you're going to want to open up X360CE. It's going to tell you X input 1 underscore 3 was not found. Hit create. And it's probably, yep, it's going to tell you that it wants to automatically search for settings. Hit cancel. And yeah, misconfigured device, that's not really a problem. And now click auto and configure these settings automatically. So now all we have to do from here is adjust some of these buttons. Here you can see um, you've got your triggers, bumpers for the left side, so on and so forth, a triggers, bumpers for the right side, and your face buttons. And this is basically what button on, which button on the controller you want that to correspond to. And right now it's configured just for a 360 controller and Xbox One controller, so everything's working the way it should. We're going to want things to work a little bit differently. So 
over here for left trigger I'm going to want to click that arrow key click record and hit the right bumper and you can see what that did there so every time I hit right bumper on my controller it'll be as if according to the game I hit left trigger and we're going to go down and adjust these settings one by one we don't have too many to adjust so for the left bumper you're going to want to click record hit the left trigger which should be axis 3 on the Xbox One controller it may be different on the 360 controller and the PS3 controller so don't worry you just basically want to hit left trigger there back and start you can reverse these if you like if you leave these like they are when you hit back it'll change your partner from team to solo and solo to team and so on and when you hit start it'll bring up the game menu uh, you can reverse them if you like because I know that on the GameCube start was actually to change your partner uh, from team to solo so yeah adjust those or reverse those if you like I leave them the same as they are right now and over here where you have the right trigger click down on there actually no I'm sorry on the right bumper click down hit record then hit the right trigger on your controller and it should say if you have an Xbox One controller axis 6 okay editing note number one um, you can see here with that setting we just applied we left right trigger unmapped now there's no real reason to map right trigger for this game the way we're configuring things but if you're uncomfortable leaving it unmapped you might want to hit down hit record and then hit something to the effect of I don't know left bumper so that it's now mapped so that if you ever need to if you ever want to use it you go ahead and hit left bumper where you would need to hit right trigger for the Y button record and hit the B button for the X button record hit the Y button and here you have the B and A buttons so this is where kind of it differs for some people I know the original Resident Evil on the PlayStation you held square to run and then hit the uh, X the cross button on the PlayStation controller for action however I kinda like the other layout for the Dreamcast which is hold on the Dreamcast controller hold A to run and then hit X to for action so on the B button when you click down and you click record if you want run to be X hit X if you want run to be A hit A it's really up to you this one so I want run to be A so I'm gonna hit A and now for the A button I'm gonna hit the opposite I'm gonna hit X and when you're done just hit save and you can exit out make sure the program is closed when you're running the game and if I open up Resident Evil 0 so now when I want to start game normally I'd hit A but since we adjusted the controls a little bit I'm gonna hit X so you notice that the controls don't exactly correspond to the little icons on the screen okay so now when I hit right trigger I aim as opposed to right bumper left trigger changes target now I hit B to change the character and then I hit Y to go to the inventory and then let me go back out of here I hold A to run as opposed to B now you can like I said you can change it so that you can hold X to run and hit A to activate but I have it so you hit A to run and hit X to activate and if you remember on the GameCube the map was Z so on the Xbox controller it's right bumper and you'll notice on the top right it says LBRB plus minus which means that normally when I hit the left bumper and right bumper it zooms in and zooms out but because we reassigned what those buttons do the triggers now do that so you have to watch out for that type of thing um, the game the game's user interface is not going to match the adjustments that we made obviously so just do keep that in mind. Alright, so hope this helped and thanks for watching.